So it's called the opening of the eyes, okay? The opening of the eyes. And that's a very important thing because uh, this is the time that Lucifer opened the eyes of Adam and Eve, right? So we're gonna get into that in a minute. So let's just go through facts, okay? If you wanna list it, you can. If not, I encourage you to go to YouTube and check this out on YouTube. You can get it all uh, from there. If you don't catch them all, which you won't, for time's sake, um, I am going to give this to uh, Charlene and let her, you know, <laughs> copy it and make copies for you guys so you'll know it's coming in September. Here's the facts. All right. September 1st, 2015. Number one. This marks the beginning of FEMA's annual National Preparedness Month. Wow. Okay, that's just the facts. Repeat that again. September 1st marks the beginning of FEMA's annual National Preparedness Month. Number two, um, September 7th uh, is Labor Day. September 7th is Labor Day. Really easy. Uh, number three in September. September 11th. This 9-11 actually marks the 14th anniversary of 9-1-1. Wow. And if you know anything about numbers and the way God, there's 14 generations from Abraham, you know, to, to David, and then you, you break that off uh, from... Uh, Anyway, the 14 generations in Matthew 21, 14, 14, and 14, these cycles that God operates in. So September, uh, September 11th marks the 14th anniversary of 911. Um, could something happen? I don't know. Um, another thing on September 11th, this is also, it's the last day of trading on Wall Street before uh, the end of the Shemitah year. So this is uh, the last day of trading on the sh uh, of the Shemitah year. So that ends the Shemitah, and it just so happens to fall on the last day of trading on Wall Street. September 12th, um, Madonna, and if you know anything about what I'm going to talk about, if you know that when uh, the enemy... Just as God reveals his plans to us, the enemy reveals his plans. He puts it in plain sight. September the 12th, Madonna is doing a new tour, and it's called uh, the Rebel Heart Tour. The Rebel Heart Tour. It opens in the United States. Her first stop is in Washington, D.C. And according to Holly Dio, the opening theme is called the desecration of the bride and the arrival of the fallen angels. Wow. This is what she's going to open up with. This is facts. September the 12th. Also, wait, say that again. I'm trying to write. September the 12th, uh, Madonna is doing her opening tour. It's called Rebel Heart Tour. It opens in the United States. The first stop is in Washington, D.C. And according to Holly Dio, the opening theme is called the desecration of the bride and the arrival of fallen angels. Madonna will be performing in the locations where the Pope will visit prior to his coming there. Washington, New York, and Philadelphia <coughs> is where she's going to be going prior, a week before the Pope gets there. It's like her preparing the way for him to come. Amen. You understand? Wow. Wow. This is facts. All right? Also, next thing. September 12th and 13th, um, uh, from Rabbi Chaim Kenensky, Kenensky, Kenensky. 
uh, Rabbi Chaim Kanensky is a leading authority in ultra-Orthodox Judaism. He has said on Israeli news that the arrival of the Messiah September 12th or 13th is imminent. The arrival of their Messiah, the Jewish Messiah, is imminent. And he is predicting that he will appear on September the 12th or the 13th. These are all facts. You can look them up. Okay? That was on Israeli news. September uh, 14th. No, also on September 13th. September 13th. This is the last day of the Shemitah year. And if you know anything about what Rabbi Jonathan Kahn has said with the book, The Shemitah, and the predictions that he laid out in 2001 and 2008, going back these seven-year cycles, that there's going to be an, you know, an economic or economic collapse, uh, uh, the stock market possibly crashing, because uh, September 13th is, ex is actually Elul 29, which is the last day of the Jewish New Year. And prior to these, uh, prior to this time, if we go back seven years and go back seven years, uh, some things had happened, and I'm gonna read them right now. September 13th, it's the last day of the Shemitah year. Shemitah is a seven year cycle. During the last two Shemitah cycles, we witnessed record breaking stock market crashes on the very last day of this cycle, Elul 29. In 2001, the Dow fell 684 points, and in 2008, it fell 777 points. This September 2015, uh, September the 13th, is the very day again on the Shemitah cycle that they are predicting something will happen. So September the 13th, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn um, says that possibly something could happen on the 13th where we see another uh, crash in the market. He said it could happen prior to or right after. So it's just an, uh, a warning, a harbinger that he's putting out there because of following the last cycles that something possibly can uh, happen. And also with that, He's not the only one that's stating this. Amen. I mean, this is coming from, you know, uh, analysts all over Wall Street and that, you know, it's imminent that something is fixing to happen in the market. Um, some kind of crash. And um, so this is what is possibly on the horizon. So what will happen this September the 13th? I don't know. You know, nobody knows. Only the Lord. Amen. September the 13th also, the very last day of the Jewish New Year, Elul 29, there's going to be a partial solar eclipse. That's a black sun. And if you know anything about that, what is the importance of it? The Bible says that when the Lord returns, the sun's going to turn black as sackcloth, or before the Lord returns, the sun will turn black as sackcloth and the moon blood red before the great and notable day of the Lord come. So... The signs that we see in Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse 14, that, you know, uh, these signs that God has given us in the heavens that we are, you know, uh, on a president of something that could possibly be happening, okay? A black sun, is that what you said? A black sun on the 13th. If uh, a lunar eclipse means war in the land, war for the Jews, that's what a lunar eclipse means. <clears throat> A black sun means war for the Gentiles. Why? Because um, a black sun or a lunar eclipse, uh, I mean a solar eclipse, it, um, because Gentiles were sun worshipers, a total eclipse, an annual solar eclipse or a partial eclipse uh, to the Jewish people, it means that war is coming for the Gentiles. So, um, you know, it doesn't take a genius to figure it out, all the things that are going on right now with war. The Bible says in Matthew 24, we're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars, but the end is not yet. 
And I don't believe the end is yet, okay? Um, and I'll get into that a little bit more. But they are, they are leading television evangelists. They are leading people, you know, uh, that are saying and expecting the Messiah to return. And I believe that what's happening right now is actually a, a big delusion to, uh, you know, um, to cause uh, um, a great delusion. I mean, that's basically what I believe is happening. So I believe just as it talks about how the Lord is going to return, we're going to see the enemy do the, the exact same thing. Right. All right. Uh, September the 15th. Now, I'm going to really start tying some things in for you. Um, <coughs> September the 15th. Um, this is the 70th session of the UN General Assembly begins on this date. Now, what's really crazy about that when I was studying this, it's the 70th session of the UN General Assembly begins on this date. Why is that important? Well, this is the first day of the new year, okay? You know, Rosh Hashanah, September 14th, 15th is Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the new year. Question. Why 70 years ago did the UN General Assembly begin on the, uh, Israel's beginning of their new year date? Why? Because the makeup of the UN General Assembly and the elite are majority Jews. They're controlling everything. They're part of the elite. It's by no coincidence that they picked this date to start. And this just so happens to be the 70th. And if you know anything about 70, 70 is real important biblically. Amen. Because you have the 70 elders, you know, with Moses. You have the 70 disciples that, you know, uh, Jesus sent out beside the 12. You had this, uh, 12 wells of water and 70 palm trees. And if you look at the number 70, 70 means prior uh, it's the number prior to spiritual blessing. But you can have a reverse of that. It could be the number prior to a curse as well. So, or, you know, um, captivity. You know, you remember that Babylon, the, the children of Israel was in captivity with Babylon for 70 years. So this September the 15th is important to the elite, to the elite whoever they may be. They're not only made up of Jews, but Gentiles as well. But if you really get down to the nuts and bolts of it, this is the enemy's plan, and I'm going to show you why. This is his time. Why? Because this is the time that Adam fell. This is the time that he took the kingdom away from Adam. This is the time that he opened their eyes. So this is the time that you know, uh, they're going to want to open our eyes to things that are coming. Because this is the time which is actually called the unveiling or revealing. And this is why they are wanting to reveal their plan now. Because their father is Lucifer, the devil. And I'm not saying all the Jewish people. I mean... Blindness in part has happened to the Jews so that the Gentiles can be engrafted in. We pray for the children of Israel. I'm talking about it's, you know, an elite group. Just as the Pharisees and Sadducees tied themselves to Rome back then, Herod built the temple. They was all part of the assembly. It's the same thing that's repeating itself now. So I'm not speaking out against the Jewish people by no means. You know, I love the Jewish people. My Messiah is a Jew. And I've been born again under the lion of the tribe of Judah. That makes me a Jew now. Amen. I'm Jewish. Yes. Amen. So, you know, I'm, it's not anti-Semitism. I'm not against the Jewish people. I love them. And it's through them our Messiah came. And blindness in part has happened to them so that we can be engrafted in. And the Gentile times is running out. Amen. Let's move on. Um, this, this season, I mean... Uh, the season, this session um, of uh, the 70th session of the UN General, General Assembly, um, 
This is the 70th session. It began, you know, um, 70 years ago on September the 15th. So y'all understand why now, okay? And I'm going to tie a lot of this stuff into you. Um, and I wrote right here, you know, the number 70 is interesting, and we can really get into a big thing with that. Also, September the 15th. Um, um, yes. Um, something that just hit me as you were talking um, when you were saying the last day of the Shemitah is 913. Um, it is, but Rosh Hashanah is actually September 13th through September 15th. Right. But what's amazing is the last day of the Shemitah is on 913, but that's all the way until 6 p.m. So their last day and their first day is on the same day. Like right. the end of one year and the beginning of new. Mm -hmm. The beginning of new starts at 6 p.m. That's right. That's like amazing. Um, I'm a backup. I didn't give you September the 14th. That was September the 15th. September the 14th. Um, is called Anna Lucius. Okay, you can look this up. A N N O Anna Lucius is a dating system used in Freemasonry. Um, it's a ceremonial or a commemorative proceeding. It adds 4,000 years to the Anno Dominion calendar and calls it Anna Lucius, which means the year of light. 5776 2015. This year they're calling yeah. the year of light. So, um, and Lucius um, is where you get Lucas, is the same word as Lucifer. The cornerstones in Freemasonry, cornerstones would be laid on this date, September the 14th. This is the beginning of the new year, Rosh Hashanah. Why are they laying cornerstones on this date? Mm -hmm. Watch. To show you the tie-in. Cornerstones would be laid on this date, September the 14th, commemorating the opening up of the eyes. Wow. In the Garden of Eden and cre creation by Lucius. Or Lucifer. <coughs> and this is the foundation of his kingdom when he took it. Wow. Wow. That's this year. September the 14th. The UN General Assembly declares that 2015 is the International Year of Light and CERN will fire up with full power to open portals to cross over and it's called the Open Sesame. Wow. It's going to be an interesting month. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Open Sesame, um, they actually, if you go to CERN, it the S-A-S-A-M-E is the abbreviations of this big long word. I, I didn't, that was just too much to write. You can check it out. But just go to CERN. You'll see that 666 emblem and you'll see what they're doing for this September uh, what they call the 15th. It it's called the Open Sesame. All right, that was September 14th. September the 15th, and I'm just going to say this. September the 15th, Jade Helm exercises are supposed to end. So what does that mean? I'm just throwing this question. Jade Helm, if you don't know about Jade Helm, Jade Helm is a military operation that's taken, uh, you know, that's been, uh, uh, that's happening, you know, throughout the United States and various states that's been an exercise to last two months with about 15,000 soldiers and about, you know, 150,000 tanks and armored or, uh, Humvees and, and all kind of things. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there about Jade Helm. I'm not going to get into it in a big way, but what I wanted you to catch is that Jade Helm exercises are scheduled to end. So what does that mean? Does that mean 
you know, that, that exercise is ending because something is about to go into effect and it won't be an exercise no more? I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. All right. September the 17th. I told you I'm not going to get into a lot of, you know, ooh, what's going to happen, but I just want to give you the facts, you know. September the 17th, the Federal Reserve is supposed to have a rate hike. The Federal Reserve is supposed to have a rate hike, but this would cause a depression. For the last seven years, there have been 0%. If they raise it 1%, the analyst is saying, it would cause us to go into a, a depression because there's been no growth for the past seven years. And they're supposed to have a rate hike September the 17th. They're going to interest rates, things are going to go up, but it'll, uh, it'll actually cause a depression and hyperinflation. This is the facts from the analyst. September 7th also. Congress is supposed to vote on Obama's Iran nuke deal, okay? September the 17th. Obama's already said that if Congress doesn't pass it, he's going to veto it. Iran's nuke deal. So you, I don't have to tell you, the news yesterday uh, is uh, Iran is preparing for war with Israel, and so is Israel. Amen. So this is what the Lord had told us about, to watch the fig tree, to watch what's going on over there in the Middle East. Amen. That's going to let us know that time is short, okay? And time is short. Is there a nuclear... Uh, uh, on Iran's nuke deal that he made. John Kerry and... Uh, you, that's a fiasco. When asked John Kerry what's in the Iran nuke deal, he's the one that supposedly wrote it but said, I don't know. I'm not going to get off into that. September 17th also, if you don't know it, think about this. September 17th is Constitution Day, and most Americans don't even know it. September 17th is our Constitution Day. That's when, you know, uh, isn't that something? Why is our Constitution Day on September the 17th, which is you know, the time of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. You know, showing that our nation was founded off of biblical principles. Amen. It's fallen in this time. That's right. September 18th um, is they're calling uh, Christians will be gathering and calling out to God for the sins of our country. Um, it's called the Days of All Conference. If you want to know where it's at, you can just punch in the Days of All Conference, September 18th, but churches around uh, the United States will be praying on this day and gathering for the sins of our country. Um, the Days of All. If I get into it, I don't have time to get into Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Um, Rosh Hashanah is the beginning of the Jewish New Year. Uh, Yom Kippur is a day of atonement, Amen. and uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, or Sukkoth, is boots, commemorates and honors that when the children of Israel was in the wilderness for 40 years, they traveled in tents. Amen. And this is all a depiction on when Christ was born, and how he tabernacled or dwelt among us, and we'll get into that in the teachings that are ahead. Um, September the 20th to the 26th um, is called... The world, week, the, the world Week for Peace in Israel. This September 20th to the 26th is called the World Week for Peace in Israel. You know, it's kind of interesting because in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, I think uh, verse 3, yeah, verse 3, here it is, that um, the Lord says when they declare peace, 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 and sudden destruction. So this September to, uh, 20th to the 26th, is the World Week for Peace in Israel. September 21st, it's the UN International Day of Peace. Wow. So the UN is connected again to this Day of Peace. Okay? September 23rd, um, this is something that uh, it's kind of, 
you know, I don't, uh, anyway, let me just tell you what it is. September 23rd begins the 70th Jubilee. That's what you can go to Israel's calendar, pull it up. It's the 70th Jubilee celebration, September the 23rd. Wow. It's not only the 70th Jubilee, and Jubilee is 50 years, but it's also the 70th session. So here we got two 70s. This is not, this stuff is planned, okay? This stuff is laid out. They know what they're doing. I believe we're on the verge of the 120th Jubilee, and I can get into that later. But, you know, from whatever time they're going back, you know, these 50 years. To September 1st again. Okay. So September 23rd begins the, the 70th Jubilee. You can uh, look this up, you know, go on, uh, you know, if you want to go to Wikipedia, pull up Israel 70th Jubilee. It'll come up. It'll give you the information, the dates, the prior Jubilees. Also, um, this is the time that the Catholics are honoring, uh, you know, the 70th Jubilee, like, um, you know, was just said, which is... Uh, so this is the 70th Jubilee, September 23rd. Also, if you don't know, September 23rd, it's the last day of summer. It's the last day of summer. Which, here it is, as you know. Um, also on September 23rd, Islam, in Islam, it's known as the Feast of Sacrifice, okay? It's known as the Feast of Sacrifice, September 23rd. It's, and it's called Aid al-Adha. Aid al-Adha. It commemorates Abraham making his son Ishmael a sacrifice. But we know that Abraham didn't sacrifice Ishmael. He sacrificed Isaac. Right. Right? right? So Islam, in Islam, they claim Abraham as their father as well. But also, let me tell you what they're saying this year. Their feast of sacrifice begins on September 23rd and on YouTube in various news articles, it's talking about that this feast of sacrifice begins and the call is to hunt for Christians, sheep. That's right. That's what they're calling it. Um, September 23rd is when CERN will um, fire up its, uh, CERN will fire up its, um, CERN will fire up with full power to open portals and to cross over. Um, and even on CERN's website, it's listed as the International Year of Light, even on their website. Beside the UN General Assembly, CERN has it on their web website. And if you know anything about CERN, CERN's mascot is Sheba. And she's in that portal, that gate. The and goddess. the Hindu goddess of destruction. And they just shine the Hindu goddess of destruction on the, um, <clears throat> the, Empire. the Empire State Building. So, you know, what, is the, what are they trying to say? You know, why did they shine it on the Empire State Building? Is there going to be an attack? Are they saying, you know, it looks like to me, it represents destruction. That looks like to me, they're showing destruction coming to America. That's just what um, I'm seeing, yes. And CERN is also located, they built it on the site where there used to be the first temple to Apollo, Apollyon. Also, um, CERN was built uh, my wife was just telling me, she told me this yesterday, I didn't write it down, but CERN was built on the site where the first temple to Apollo was actually built. Apollo, Apollyon, which is Satan, yes. The new commercial in Starbucks, new commercial, is a man with six arms. That's Sheba. 
That's Shiva. The new um, commercial for Starbucks depicts Shiva. Um, so anyway, the next thing, that was uh, September 23rd. So CERN is firing up, also on September 23rd. Um, also on September 23rd, this very date that CERN is firing up, and we have this, uh, um, this, Islam, this Islamic uh, holy day, they call it. We also have the Pope arrives at the White House to meet with Obama on September 23rd. Um, if you want to find out what's going on with the Pope, um, you can punch in 2015, the apostolic journey of Pope Francis to the United States of America. If you want to find out, his whole agenda has been laid out for him and you're going to see where he's going to go and what, what, he, you know, what the agenda is going to be. The, the apostolic journey of, the Pope, of Pope Francis to the United States of America. Um, check this out. Pope Francis is the 266th Pope and will be meeting with the President on the 266th day of the year. Some have suggested that on this day something is going to be birthed. Why? Because the gestation period for a woman given birth is 266 days. Not only that, it's Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement. Something new is happening. When Jesus died on the cross, he atoned, something new began, right? Something is coming. September 24th is the Day of Atonement. September 24th, the Pope will address the joint session uh, of the U.S. Congress on the New World Order, a one world religion, and Agenda 21 and sustainable life in the future. A new world order, a one world religion, and sustainable life in the future. Agenda 21. That's what he's going to address us with. Just like the Bible said, a new world order, a one world religion. It is, why are they, why is it happening now? Why is it being revealed now? Because this is the day that Lucifer opened the eyes of Adam and Eve. This is the time they want to reveal, open your eyes to their plan. It's no longer conspiracy. It's in your face. It's in our face. That's why they're choosing to do it now. Remember, these are facts, not opinions. Not, I think, what's going to happen. September 25th. September 25th. Um, on September 25th, if we go back to May 14th of 2014, the French foreign minister, Laurent Fabius, Fabus, proclaimed with John Kerry that we have 500 days to avoid climate chaos, which means to get ready for. We have 500 days last May 14th, which is my anniversary, Last May 14, 2014, John Kerry and the French foreign minister proclaimed that we have 500 days until we see weather chaos. Until we see what? Climate chaos. Five, days again? It started May 14th. Right. September 25th of 2015, this year, is the 500th day. What are they saying? 
They said in 500 days there's going to be serious weather chaos. September 25th of this of this next month is the is the start of that the end of that 500 day, which would start their weather chaos. It has been suggested, it's being talked about that it could possibly be, number one, a pole shift, which would bring utter devastation. Number two, Nibiru is coming, Planet X. Number three, they're expecting, they said, an ice age to come all the way down to the middle of the United States. It'll be like Antarctica in the middle of the United States. Also, a media strike. So there's so many things that's being um, said, and this has been uh, talked about on local news channels around the world. In fact, if you guys remember, it was only a month ago that on Fox News, they came on and they are predicting uh, a megaquake 9.2 to hit on the West Coast shortly. That was just on Fox News and the Weather Channel a month ago. So here it is lining up with, you know, what they said a year ago. So the warnings are there. They have been warning us. Just like the Bible warns us of things to come, I believe they have to follow the same laws of God. Just as God reveals His plan through His Word, Amen. so they reveal their plan through their Word, media, Amen. and movies, and stories, and all of these things. And whether you, you know, are open, whether you have eyes to see or ears to hear is totally up to you. Yes? Yeah. He said in Matthew, he said, you will know by the signs of the time. That's exactly I mean, right. It's that simple. That's exactly you know, right. If you're we, looking for my coming, you will know by the signs of the time. That's right. Yes. One thing that you forgot on the 23rd is the Newton's riddle. That he could not possibly have known that from the taking of the return to Jerusalem is exactly 49 years to the day. Newton could not have known that. If you look it up, Newton's reader, it comes up 49 years from June 6, That's right. That's 1967. That's right. If you put 49 years times 360, it comes up to, to September 23rd, 19, uh, 2015. And he said that the word re return, uh, means from the, the commandment to return. That was his study on Daniel, and anybody can look it up. And if you just uh, YouTube Newton's riddle, they work it out, that comes up to the exact day. Newton could not have known That's right. when the Jews were going to retake, retake Jerusalem. That's right. They could not possibly know that it was going to come up to the 23rd because, you know, the calendar changes. So what uh, Miss Reader is saying, I, I did, uh, she's talking about Newton's riddle. Yeah. And um, I did look at Newton's riddle and I, I just forgot to write it down. Um, I'm sure there's some other things, but what she was saying, Newton's riddle um, talks about the Jews um, coming back to the land and, and um, um, them, you know, regaining the Temple Mount. Well, they did this in 1967, and if you, a jubilee is 50 years, so if you follow Newton's riddle, which is September 23rd, 2015. If you go back 49 years, June the 6th, you'll find out that um, from June the 6th to September 23rd, 2015, is exactly 49 years, and the beginning of 2016 is a jubilee in which they're actually proclaiming right now. So it would be, like Ms. Rita was saying, it would be impossible for Newton, you know, hundreds of years ago, to know when the children of Israel was going to, you know, much less be a, a, a state in 1948, but to retake the mountain in 1967, you know, this is uh, only something that God would know. But you see how everything is, is falling into place. So this is just to kind of make you aware of the things that are going on and um, 
and then I'm going to tell you what I believe you need to do um, right after this. Uh, thank you, Rita. That was um, also, um, um, they're predicting, like I said, if we go back to September 25th, the, the, you know, the 500 days to avoid climate chaos, these things that I'm telling you, you can actually go and look up for yourself. Just punch it into uh, YouTube. You'll see the actual um, um, news broadcast, and it's been uh, published around the world. Also, September 25th, the Pope will hold a mass in Madison Square Garden in New York. This is where uh, Madonna is going to go perform, you know, uh, the desecration of the bride and the return of the Nephilim, um, the fallen angels. The Bible says, as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So if Jesus said, um, you know, I believe it. And whether you want to call them aliens or not is totally up to you. But, you know, it's demonic. It's demons and it's fallen angels. Um, September 25th through 27th, the United Nations launches a brand new universal agenda for humanity known as Agenda 2030. Now, I want to just fill you in on Agenda 21. It means by the year 2021, this, what he's going to be implementing and talking about, they want to have it set up for 2021 which I believe we're entering into the next five years is going to be world war. Um, but it's going to be a controlled war to bring in the new world order. So this is all something that they're controlling. What I thought is really crazy, that September 25th through 27th, the United Nations launches a brand new universal agenda for humanity known as Agenda 2030. So this agenda that the Pope is going to talk about on September 25th at Madison Square Garden. It says on September 25th, the Pope will kick off the Agenda 2030 and unveil, that means open our eyes to, reveal to us the information for our future. Now what is so unbelievable about that is that I believe that, and most people, um, they keep saying this is the last tetrad for blood moons, but it's not. 2032 and 33 is. And 2033, it falls on Israel's feast day. And, and I've been saying that from the death of Christ to from either uh, the time of, uh, you know, uh, 30 to 33, wherever he died up in that time, to the year 2030, uh, 33 is, I believe, would be the return of the Lord. I've been saying that forever um, for the past seven years and have documentation to go back to it. But here it is. The Pope is giving us an agenda that, you know, he's going to reveal to us on September 25th that brings us to the year 2030. And I'm just going to tell you something, that that year 2030 could possibly be when the Lord takes us out of here. And the tribulation, I believe, would start three and a half years prior to that. That's what I believe. So um, it's uh, whether it's pre, mid, or post, you know, it, I don't care, you know, because I trust in the Lord. And um, I'm looking for him now, but I don't believe he's going to come until then because the new world order has to have its time to set up and establish what it is going to do. And I believe this is proof right here that they know, they know when the Lord's going to return. Um, and I know you say, no man knows the day or the hour. And we're right. We don't know the day or the hour when the Lord comes. But in, in Thessalonians, it says that, ch that we are not the children of darkness Amen. so that that day would overtake us as a thief. They know the time, the Come around, on. the season that the Lord's going to come. Amen. They don't know the, the, the exact day or hour because, number one, the Bible says that God shortens the days in those times. Right. So no man's going to know. I believe that the chaos is going to be so great, you know, oh, what time is it? Man, there ain't going to be none. You ain't going to be thinking about it. You're not going to know. But here it is. There's an agenda laid out for 2030. And, um, you know, uh, they know, you know. But what's going to happen, and I believe, is that they're going to pose right now 
in this next time that we're entering into from 2015 and on a false coming. They're going to make it look like Jesus came back. They're going to have the sky probably do some crazy things with the harp system. And they might even have a man come down, no telling right. what they're going to do through uh, Project Blue Beam and, and all of this other stuff I don't have time to get into you with. But remember, the enemy is very deceiving. But I'm going to tell you something. You'll know that you know that you know. And don't ever forget this. The Bible says when you see lightning come from the east to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So if you hear anywhere around the world that Jesus is, you know, he's in the Middle East or, he, or he's here or there, you know, don't believe it. Because uh, if you're a Christian and you hear these things and if you see the sky open up and you don't go up, well, it ain't him. <laughs> so uh, you don't have to worry about it because um, I'm not going to go run for him, you know. And uh, I know when that, when, uh, the Bible says as the sun rises from the east and sets in the west and as lightning goes from the east and also unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Revelation says that the heavens are going to roll back like a scroll and we're going to see Him riding on a white horse and, you know, hundreds of whatever, millions uh, riding with Him. All the saints coming with the clouds in great glory and, and um, uh, we'll get into that in another, uh, another time. But anyway... So I do believe that's going to be a great delusion Jesus talks about in Matthew Amen. chapter 24 right. that if it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived. So, um, you know, you really need to know your word. That's you right. really need to know your word and, and what the word says. And so you're not deceived in the last days. And don't think you cannot be deceived because the Bible says if it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived. And... Um, so a time of great delusion is coming and you're going to see fire come down and you're going to see miracles and you're going to see all kind of things. But, you know, it's not him. It's not him. You'll know when it's him when you drop this flesh and you meet him in the air. Then you'll know he's the one and the only one. And that's Jesus Christ. Um, also, um, so on uh, September 25th through 27th, the United Nations launches a brand new universal agenda for humanity known as the Agenda 2030. On September 25th, the Pope will kick off the Agenda 2030 and unveil the information for our future. Maybe for their future, but not for mine. Um, September 26th and 27th, the Pope will travel to Philadelphia for the 2015 World Meeting of Families. Wow. One world order. It's called the World Meeting of Families. And where is he going? He's going to Philadelphia. Why? You know, the city of bro brotherly love. It's, you know, it's, there's only two, um, um, there's only two churches uh, in, out of the seven in the book of Revelations that uh, God commemorates the, the Philadelphian church. I think it's the church of Sardis. I'm not sure that um, he doesn't, uh, you know, pass judgment on. But anyway, I'd have to check that out. I'm not really sure. But Philadelphia, it's known as brotherly love. And how is he coming? In love. And that's why he's going there. But prior to him getting there, Madonna will perform her, you know, desecration of the bride. And, you know, um, the releasing or calling of the fallen angels. So, um, and I'm going to tell you something. Let me just throw this at you. If you remember that last year, Katy Perry, just so give you an, an idea about um, Mystery Babylon in Revelations chapter 17. It says that, you know, um, she rods the beast, you know. And if you know anything about or if you don't know anything about what's happening right now, they're putting in plain sight the things that they're doing. And at the Super Bowl last year, Katy Perry rode out on a beast, symbolizing, symbolizing. Not only that, but the United Nations emblem uh, in Europe is actually a woman riding a beast. So if you want to know if we're part of Mystery Babylon, because Mystery Babylon has a lot of harlots, and the United States is a harlot. Amen. And she is a killer of the innocent, of innocent babies and uh, a promoter of homosexuality. Yep. And um, 
God is not going to bless the United States of America. But in the midst of this Egypt that we live in, God will keep his people, just like he did at the children of Israel in Egypt. And the Bible says that when the Lord returns, he calls Israel Sodom and Egypt. So um, we're facing some times that are ahead of us. You know, you really need to know Jesus. You really need to know him. Amen. And, uh, and when I say that, a lot of people proclaim to know him. But um, he better know you because, you know, he's not knocking, you know, in the end. It's you knocking at his door saying, open up and let us in. And he says, you know, I never knew you. So the time to know him is now. Ask Jesus in your heart. Ooh, um, amen. You know, um, you need to be ready spiritually. You need to find a church and get hooked up and get plugged into that, that preaches the word of God, the full amen. gospel. You know, not... Uh, it's got to be the full gospel. You know, the Bible's clear. You know, no liar, fornicator, adulterer, homosexual, um, anyone who's a drunkard, covetousness. Um, there's a list of them will enter into the kingdom of heaven. So, uh, and it starts out with saying, be not deceived, God is not mocked. And don't deceive yourself in believing that you're a good person. And, you know, I didn't hurt anybody or do anything. And, um, you know, Unless you are born again, you're part of this system. And you need to realize that. They own you. And the only way that you can become a child of the kingdom is you have to be born again. That means you have to die to yourself and you have to ask Jesus Christ in your heart as your personal Savior. You have to realize that you're a sinner. It's not just walking down the aisle and, you know, oh, I want to ask Jesus in my heart and you go out. There's got to be a true heartful repentance. And if you don't experience that repentance, Amen. you know, all you have to do is ask the Lord. You know, just say, hey, I don't understand. You know, and, um, but I believe the words that I'm hearing because the Bible says, uh, when you hear the truth, you'll know it. And the truth is Jesus Christ. And that truth will set you free. Amen. And I don't belong to Lucifer. I used to. But I was born again under the line of the tribe of Judah. And Jesus Christ is my father. He's my daddy. He's my shepherd. He's my comforter. He's my savior. He is my forgiver. He's everything that I need, and he's everything that you need. So I encourage you, if you don't know him, ask him. Because the Bible says the Holy Spirit will reveal him. Uh, he, the Spirit has come to reveal Jesus Christ to you. He'll reveal him. If you really want him, and you want to experience him in a way that you've never experienced, just, if it's just been lip service to you, if you've been in church. I was in church my whole life. I'm 45 years old, and I really didn't make, meet Jesus on a personal level till probably, you know, around 1993 is when I gave my heart to him. And then I battled from 93 to 1999 when my life was radically changed, and I understood that, you know, he began to speak to me. And it was, he spoke to me through his word, spending table time with him, sitting down, reading his word, fellowshipping with him. If you're not reading his word, you're not hearing him. Amen. There's too many voices out there uh, for you to try to, to distinguish to see if it's God or if it's not. Yeah. You're either going to hear the voice of the enemy, you're going to hear the voice of the enemy, the voice of self, or the voice of God. Amen. And that's the only, that's the only voices that are out there. That's it. And remember, your heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. Who can know it? You can't be led by your heart. You have to be led by Amen. the Word. It's the only way. It's the only way. Let's keep going. Amen, brother. September 25th through 27th, uh, I told you what's going to happen. Um, also, um, September 25th through 27th, um, they have... It's called the Big Rave Concert. That's going to be happening in Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia, September 25th through 27th. It's called Tomorrowland slash Tomorrow World. Man, you see all these, this New World Order agenda coming out. This Tomorrowland, Tomorrow World. What's, they're telling us what's fixing to begin. It is a birthing or a new beginning. It will be celebrating false love, false light, Antichrist portals and the keys to opening doors and it's going to be held on the north 33 degree parallel. You think this is by chance? 
It's uh, also, um, also, in the writings of an Islamic prophet written from old by Ali bin Abin Abai Talib, he writes that just before the coming of the Mahdi, a tall black man will rise up to take command of the West and he will command the most powerful army on earth. Also in Islam, they are predicting the coming of the Mahdi on September, in September 2015, which is the Islamic Antichrist. There's a lot of these, uh, this is fact stuff that they're putting out there for you and me, okay? September, uh, I'm almost done. And I didn't leave September. Also, um, September uh, 28th, it's the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. It's the last of the four blood moons, the four blood moon tetrad. This moon will be seen or visible in Israel. Um, it's going to be uh, the biggest blood moon that they've seen in the past 5,000 years. The moon is going to be closest to the earth in the past 5,000 years. And so it's going to be um, a massive blood moon that they're going to see. Also, September 28th, they are, uh, September 28th is, uh, they are expecting the collapse of the U.S. dollar. Um, that is, that isn't a fact. That is, just things they're talking about um, and expecting and um, I think that's really uh, that's it um, the Lord told me to say that you know the season that we're in right now if you don't know it's the season of uh, this is when Lucifer opened up the eyes to Adam and Eve and it brought death so Lucifer or the elite or this new world order plan Go figure, this is when they want to open our eyes to their agenda, which their agenda brings death, but Jesus Christ brings life. So just so you know, it's a time of unveiling or revealing. And um, it's a time of open eyes, but you really need to remember that, you know, you and I are the apple of God's eye. He's always got his eyes on his children. It's like a, like a mom, you know, you bring your, your child to the you know, to the playground, and that child, she's always watching. You can have a conversation with her, but she don't never take her eyes off her kids. She's constantly looking. Um, you know, this is why Jesus was made an open spectacle. Wow. He was the atonement, right? So, and one of the teachings that I get into is show how... Um, the fall feast and the spring feast are the exact same thing, and God just flipped the times. He took the first month and made it the seventh, and the seventh the first. That's why Jesus died on Passover, which, you know, is atonement. Um, he atoned for us. Um, Jesus was made an open spectacle. Some things the Lord began to speak to me was that, um, you know, this is the first time that... Um, when the eyes of Adam and Eve was open, that, you know, for the first time in their life, they cried. Their eyes leaked water for the first time. It was at this time. I've been asking the Lord about that leak, and Lord, what are you trying to tell me? <coughs> you know, it's pretty crazy because this is the same time that Noah's flood happened as well. That's right. So first, it was in this time, if we go back, it was Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, in the Feast of Tabernacles. On the second month, the 17th day of the month, Noah entered into the ark. That falls in the Feast of, from Rosh Hashanah to the Feast of Tabernacles. That was the first time the heavens cried and drops fell from the heavens at the same time. Um, You know, uh, one of the themes for this time is actually um, 
you know, a Waco sleeper and really see what it is. Either you can be illuminated from the enemy, illuminated from the enemy, or you can be enlightened by Jesus Christ, the true light. Amen. So um, that's what I wanted to share with you guys this morning. Um, the message I was going to get into is called the opening of the eyes, but I wanted to, sh you know, kind of share some things with you that this next month, um, uh, they got a lot of things, fact things that are out there. Um, also, and I'm going to close with this, um, I believe personally that we're about to enter into some times and you need to be ready physically and spiritually. So um, if you don't know, you really need to, uh, you need to have some food put on the side. And you can call me crazy, I don't care. But um, Amen. put some food away. You know, um, I'm not the only one saying it. Amen. They are, uh, you know, maybe you might find Perry Stone credible. He told his whole church to put a three-month food supply, you know, away. But there's a lot of them out there that is saying prepare physically. But most of all, you need to be prepared spiritually. And whatever comes our way, you know, um, it's only through Christ that we can endure. It's uh, not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. So, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I, Father, I thank you, Lord, that, um, Lord, you're good to us. And, uh, Lord, I pray for those that, that their eyes would be open to the truth. And, Lord, that they would seek you because you are their provision. And uh, if you have any more questions about anything that I talked about, um, Pastor Joseph at the Citadel Church in Poplarville, um, you can uh, get in touch with me. Uh, give me a call. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, leave a message on YouTube, uh, on the videos, and I'll get back to you. And, uh, and uh, be blessed. Amen.